Hi class, this will be our second to last chapter, chapter 10. So if you feel like things have really been moving quickly, you're absolutely right. They certainly have. We'll have the last couple of weeks to work on our last chapter that talks about file access and a chance for you to um, work on your final project and get everything cleared up. But for now, we're still working on our week three items. We're looking at working with more advanced concepts with our forms-based processing. And we mentioned in the last chapter that when we're working with graphical user interfaces, we're normally using event-driven processing. And we can think of event-driven processing as something that we use in our personal lives. Events always drive us. So hopefully your birthday event kicks off and is tied to a wonderful birthday party that's all wired up together. We have that event processing set up for us automatically, right? We're used to that. Well, in our code, we can kind of do the same thing. First of all, we start out with a user interacting with our form. They click a button or something like that, which is creates an event. The operating system notifies our program that this event has occurred because remember our program is just sitting there waiting for something to happen. We have some C sharp code then tied to that event that runs in response to the event occurring. When the C sharp code is running it does some things to update the form's appearance or maybe modify some data on the form as a result of the event and then the form redisplays and again just kind of goes into a continuous loop waiting for the user to create a new event. So that event processes, and then at the event end of the event processing, our form is normally redisplayed, just waiting for another event to occur. Whenever we're working with events in C-sharp, they're going to be handled in the code using a concept of delegates. And these cartoons here are to kind of remind you and make you think about what a delegate is. A, de a delegate is somebody or something that you can have as a stand-in. So this little cartoon down here says, what happened to the project I delegated to you? And he says, I delegated it. Right, And then... This poor guy's going to take all the heat, you know. And then in this picture, we see, you know, the big red guy, he's delegating his whole uh, swarm of memes there to get, get out and do some things. Whenever we create a connection in C Sharp, we're going to use a C Sharp code concept called a delegate. We're going to use this to connect our method that we coded with a form event. And creating this connection using this delegate is called wiring. So we're going to be wiring our code to that event. This picture shows a little bit about what a delegate is. A delegate is a piece of code that is created as a function definition, and it really just specifies its name, the delegate's name, and some sort of method signature. And then we can create additional methods and have them be associated with the delegate. Then when the delegate is instantiated or executed, the associated method is executed. So in this example, we have a delegate created and we have three possible functions that could associate themselves with that delegate. Right now, this top function is associated. So whenever we generate any sort of activity to use that delegate, this particular function will be executed. Now, it's kind of a high level concept, so how does it work in C Sharp? Well, here's some code. We've created a delegate here named print, and we're saying that this delegate requires an integer as a parameter, and it does not return any value. So if you notice, the, the information after the keyword delegate is a method signature or a function signature in C Sharp. Now, in our code, we can specify another method here. Print number uses an integer and it does some things. Then we can associate this print number method with our print delegate. And when we executed this line of code then, instead of executing something else, 
whenever we use our print delegate, we would be executing this print number method. Why is that helpful? Well, sometimes we have some code that we know uh, we want to set up in a certain way, and we want it to be called from many different locations in many different ways, and we can use a delegate to kind of give us that capability. In C Sharp, the way we do it is by using the event handler delegate. So an event handler, again, is a type of class, type of object that handles an event that's occurred in our system, and we are going to associate our method code with this delegate, this event handler keyword. So this bottom line of code down here pointed to by this green box is the delegate association that's generated for us when we double click on button one in our form design. And we see the code window and we see this method created called button one underscore click. Well, this line of code has been added to the code in the background, the behind the scenes C sharp file that's associating our new method with that event handler for that button object. So we're associating all of these things together. Now the keyword event handler, if you notice, is a predefined delegate definition in the forms class. Within our parentheses, we're specifying what method to be executed when this delegate is used. And we could manually delete this line if we need to because it's causing an error in our program. And I'll show you that in just a second. Before we do that, though, do notice that in this system-generated code, we see a lot of use of the, of the keyword this. This dot just specifies the current instance of the current class. So whenever I see this dot in a form, I know that it's referring to this form, the form that's currently executing. Okay, so let's look at how we might have an error that we would need to delete this um, delegate statement because of. I'm going to grab my Hello World application, my v22 that we were working on in our last video and if you remember early on i accidentally double clicked on label one let's go back to our form and i'll show you that this is my label one and i don't need any code associated with um, anything for this label so i have this method that's left over in my program that i don't really need it's bothering me, right? It bothers you guys. So let's look at my form again. Oh, it looks nice. Go back to my code, and I'm going to delete this method because, you know, we're all that OCD type programmer that doesn't want that extra stuff. Wow, look, as soon as I deleted that method, I got an error. That's pretty weird. We're going to come back and look at it. First, I want to check my form. And now I can't even see my form. Don't start over. Please don't start over on your project if this happens. This is a minor problem, and we just need to delete that delegate association that was in that form-generated code. There are several ways we can do it. First of all, this scary stop message that won't even display your form has a link here that says go to code. That would take us to the line of code that associates that event procedure that we just deleted with that delegate. We could delete it there. Or we could click on the error message down here. And if we double click on the message text, not the link that would take us to the web, but the message text that'll take us to the line in error in our code, we'll see, oh, it's in that form generated code. And it's saying that there is no such thing as label one underscore click. Well, that's true, I just deleted it. So I can safely delete this line of code that from that forms generated code and now my form should be fine oh yeah everything's all happy again and I have gotten rid of that extra unnecessary method that came about from me accidentally double clicking so that is just deleting the delegate association from our code from our form 
And when we start working on a new forms-based application, things can be pretty simple or they can be pretty complex. We have some design tools available that we need to be using, thinking about, beginning familiar with. And there are some different tools that we can use for different purposes. The first is a wireframe, and a wireframe is a mock-up tool or just a layout of your form. So you could draw it with a pencil, you could use paint, you could use paint shop, any sort of tool. Adobe has a new tool called Adobe XD for a designer, and it says it's free right now if you want to download it and try it. This layout down here shows us an example of a wireframe. They're just saying, I'm going to have some items in these lists and some text here. So it's not necessarily perfect data, just examples of what things are going to look like, how the form is going to be laid out. The next design tool that is really used often is a storyboard. In a storyboard, you could almost think of as like a cartoon. So it shows interaction or action, and it's going to be the action between multiple forms or interfaces. Now again, just like the wireframing tools, there are lots of free tools available. This picture down here shows an example of a storyboard for a mobile app. So whatever this mobile app is, if somebody taps on this icon, this form is going to be displayed, and if they click on the button down at the bottom, it's going to do some actions. And notice this storyboard gets pretty involved, but it would be a great um, tool for all of the developers to have in hand so that they know how their portion of the code is supposed to interact with the rest of the application overall. Lastly, for us, we're going to think about a prototype. And a prototype, you know, sim simulates a functioning thing or a function, in our case, a functioning application. So we could have some some forms that are all designed with just some test data loading up in them and some button actions that cause some some you know messages to pop up and different things like that. So no actual working code, but some prototype code just to emulate how the system is going to work in the end. And this allows the user to interact with the working product. This picture down here just shows that if we think about prototyping overall, we're going to start with requirements and work on our design using probably these other tools. And then we'll be building and prototyping and showing our user and then refining based on their input, maybe even redesigning a little bit. And it'll be um, a cyclical thing until we come up with something that we can all agree on as a final product. So the prototype allows us to get our users involved and actually see what things are going to look like. Now, <laughs> I do want to say, whenever we turn things in, in class, they shouldn't be a prototype, right? Because I expect a fully working application. So we don't want to see applications that just generate the messages or the output. We want to see the processing that occurs. Now, one of the first things that we have in our chapter here is a list box control. I'm going to stop this video and we'll start our list box example with another video so that things don't get too long. So come back for that one. Thank you.